Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and please read along with me in your authorized version of the scriptures, word for word, verse by verse, of what we will be looking at today. Follow me along, make sure I'm telling you the truth, make sure I'm taking nothing out of context. If you come, if we come across something and you have a question about the context, pause the video. Be a Berean, search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Okay. Follow me along also because sometimes this, my mouth will go quicker than my brain and my eyes, so follow me along. Romans chapter 9, verses 22 and verse 24. What if God, willing to shew his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction fitted not made but they fit themselves onto that destruction Romans chapter 2 verses 5 and 6 but after thy hardness and impenitent impenitent heart Treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds. Ever heard the, the saying, uh, well, I'm just giving you enough rope to hang yourself, or I'm just letting you dig your own grave deeper and deeper. Hmm. Let's go back to Romans 9, verse 23 and 24. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy. Those of us who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, saints. Which he had afore prepared unto glory. Even us. Whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. And this thing about called, okay? God chose the cross and the way of the cross, death to self, okay? That is what he has called uh, the way of the cross, and the way of the cross is true salvation. Because going to the cross is what? Death to yourself. Okay? That's what the cross is about. Death. There has to be a death first before something can be born again. Okay? Now let's go back to Romans chapter 2, picking up at verses 7 on to verse 11. <laughs> to them who by patient Continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. But unto them that are contentious. Oh boy, contentious. Set in their ways. They are because they think they are. They are because they can say a few words. And do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. Obedience unto the truth. Obedience unto the truth. Think about this. So many people out there, as I, have seen, I saw yesterday, wow! Why not in a minute? This idea see Jesus Christ he is the door and if you go in by him you shall go in and out and find pasture but so many people so many of these Christians boot the door out of the way they boot the door and they want to go out go up some other way okay so this obedience unto the truth Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. 
No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Right? So the Lord has called you, whoever you are, the way of the cross. Okay? And see, religious, contentious, pretentious, hot-headed religionists don't like the way of the cross because the way of the cross is what? First of all, it's a death. It's a death. Okay? And remember, the cross was reserved for the most hyenas of criminals, which our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, was not. Okay? But in terms of us mankind, sinners that we are, okay? Mankind. All mankind are sinners, okay? There are those who are saved, who are saints, who still sin. But, okay, think about it. On the cross, number one, you were going to die. It was death of yourself. Number two, you were there because you deserved it. And number three, in the face of certain death, fear. So within that way of the cross that our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, hath called every single one of us. He's called all of us the way of the cross. But see, not everybody is going to go the way of the cross. Okay? The way of the cross, which is death to self. There, you have to be dead in order to be born again. Okay? That's just the way it works. So, right here, where it says, But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth. Okay? Alright? Are you going the way that the Lord has called? Or are you being contentious and booting the door and climbing up some other way? <laughs> See, if you don't go the way that our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, has called the way of the cross, you're a thief and a robber if you go any other way. Jesus Christ, he is the door. And if you're going to boot the door out of the way because you don't like to go the way of the cross, then you're not being obedient unto the truth, are you? Mm -hmm. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, being a thief and a robber. The thief cometh not but to kill and to destroy by booting the door out of the way. Mm. Indignation and wrath. Tribulation. In anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good. And there's only one that was good. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? To the Jew first and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God. No respect of persons. The Lord has called one way. The way of the cross. Brokenness, contrition, and fear of the Lord. And see, those of us who are saved, uh, our brother and I, we talked about this on Saturday. Which will be in the description box for you. Uh, those of us who are saints of the church of the living God, that brokenness, contrition, and fear happens in one fell swoop. When you realize the reality of your situation, where, where are you going to go? Who, where else are you going to go? Huh? Satan has given you so many options on the buffet line of Christianity and religion in itself. But there's only one way. 
There's only one way. And see, our Lord is the one who does the saving. Okay? But see, he has called you the way of the cross. The way of death. In order for something new to be to become, something old has to die. However, we are still reminded of that old, aren't we, by, by this sagging skin suit which our soul and spirit inhabit, don't we? Yes, because it is this, the flesh. That warreth against the spirit. Okay? Second Peter chapter two. Second Peter chapter two. Verses nine and on to verse twelve. Second Peter chapter two, verses nine on to verse twelve. I might have the wrong one. Yes. 2 Peter chapter 3. I don't know why I wrote down 2. 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 9 on to verse 12. Let's, let's, let's make it 8 on to verse 12. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Heretics will like to come to verse 8 and try to squeeze in there the thousand-year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ. Check the margin within your scriptures even. There might even be a reference onto it. There might be. Uh, this one has Psalm 90, uh, the, the Psalm of um, Moses and whatnot. Okay? But what verse 8 is talking about is that our Lord Jesus Christ, God who is our Father, is not bound by the boundary of our time. Okay? He is eternal. A thousand years to him is nothing. A day is even a twinkling of the, uh, of the eye. Okay? So verse 8 talks about the eternality, if that's even a word. The eternalness of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. He is not bound by our time. However, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, this is bound by time. This is bound by time. Thermodynamics. The, the world and the, the universe, as it were, they're governed by laws, the laws that God has established. And because of the gravity that is on this planet, this sags. Everything falls apart within time. But see, our Lord is not bound by our time. Hence, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness. See, because even though we as saints of the church of the living God, we need to have an eternal mindset. And we need to keep our eyes upon Jesus. Absolutely we do. But more often than not, we get sidetracked because of eyes of flesh. Don't we? Mm-hmm. Ow. Mm-hmm. Yes, we do. Okay? The Lord is not slack. Concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word, us word meaning mankind, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Yes, yes, God wants all people to come to repentance. In the description box, I believe it was the video, God loves you where we talk about that. That will be in the description box for you, okay? God wants all people to come to repentance. But see, God has called a specific 
exclusive way, the way of the cross, the way he chose, the way he called, okay? And self-righteous, wow, self-righteous prig Christians, they don't like that. They don't like the cross. They, they like the cross when they can see Jesus still on it. Because, hey, think about this. Like, we've talked about this many times before. If Christ is still on the cross, then there's something. Then you can pull him off there, can't you? All right? There's something that you can do. Big pardon. Spitting out breakfast. <laughs> All right? But see, Christ isn't on the cross. He died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And that blood that he shed on that cross, you know, that gets behind the ears, Jack. Cleanses us from all sin. He is risen. It is finished. And see, if it is finished, it is not up to you. But see, the truth Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life, okay? If you don't go the way that he has called you, you're being disobedient unto the truth. Think about that. Think about that, okay? But God wants something. God would have everyone to come to repentance. And this repentance for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ is not belief. Thou believest there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Unfortunately, I came across a whole little subculture of these people. It's, it's more than that in a second, it's just amazing. But what happens is the Lord has called us by a way. A way that he has chosen. He has called you the way of the cross. It's simple. It really is. But see, it's taxing to you. Because you have to die to you. Okay? And see, once you go the way of the cross, and the Lord save you, okay? Okay? And the Lord save you. That doesn't remove you from the temptation of this. That this provides. Remember, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay, he is come into the flesh. God in flesh never sinned. But was housed with something that was made of earth. Okay? We, we talked about that at length. There's no reason, no excuse for people who want to believe contrary to that. Rather than they are simply these lost devils, deceiving and being deceived, deceiving themselves that they are, booting the door out of the way and climbing up some other way. Verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Kind of like a sudden implosion of a submarine. About that, did a video, you know, while talking about that as the premise with the, with the idea that, you know, at any given moment, it could be your last breath. Those five guys that were on that Titan, right? They, it imploded. Sudden, instantaneous. It didn't hurt. They didn't feel a thing. They didn't feel a thing. But see, even thus, just like that, in under a millisecond, they say, those five people went to judgment. You think about that. You think about that. An implosion. I mean, and I did. I looked up a little about it. You know, an implosion, especially with that Titan thing at that depth. 
like like they're saying, and yeah, an implosion. It folded in on itself. They call it uh, their jargon. They call it folding. Okay, but instantaneous death, like that, like a blink. The an implosion is like a blink. So one minute, everything is hunky dory. Next minute, who are you? You're the one that I didn't believe on. You're the one that I mocked. You're the one I thought I believed in. Oh boy. Or, oh Lord, <laughs> get down and up. Be as one dead like John the Apostle, fall at his feet, like, oh Lord. And see, point of this video. Sooner or later, doesn't matter who you are, sooner or later, you're going to bow. Sooner or later, you're going to bow. It's just a matter of when and where. Let's continue. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. See then, that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought ye to be? A person is the spirit, soul, and body. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Twice in that passage. Twice in that passage. And right here... What man, verse 11, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? <clears throat> we ought to strive to be holy in our conversation and godly, godliness. Yes, and that's a daily striving. But you know what? We sin. We make mistakes. We make a lot of mistakes. We sin. We do. Okay? Unless you're a perfect creature like some of these Christians that I looked at yesterday. Most of us, you know, persons, spirit, soul, and body, even us saints, have moments where we are hypocrites. Unless, you know, you're these perfect creatures from elsewhere, you know, who never have bouts of hypocrisy and are very quick to point out hypocrisy trying to cover for their own very very strange very strange very strange and it's interesting because that is used as a deflection from themselves that people don't notice their own so they like are endless on others the tactics of devils but see, sooner or later, it doesn't matter, I beg your pardon, I got something in my left eye. Sooner or later, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't really matter what you believe about this either, in this respect. Sooner or later, you're going to bow either before the Lord, your Savior, our God, our Father, Jesus Christ, Willingly, as your savior, or you're going to bow before him in judgment at the great white throne. Either way, you're going to bow to the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And for all these people who make a mock at sin, Fools to make a mock at sin. 
and these people who go out there and flaunt their sin like the trans people and these woke idiots. And I'm being polite when I say that. And all these Christians, all these Christians, man. Exodus chapter 20, just one verse. Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20, just, just, just one verse, just one verse, verse 7. Exodus chapter 20, verse 7, just, just one. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Hmm. Think about that. Now, we equate taking the name of our Lord in vain is when someone uses the name of our Lord as a cuss word or something like that. That applies to that. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. But what is vanity? Vanity of vanities, said the preacher. All is vanity. Have you ever read Ecclesiastes? Hmm? What is a life without Christ? Vanity. What, what's, what's its meaning? What's its purpose? What's its hope? A life without Christ. Today, that's all you got. Whoever you are, you don't know about tomorrow. That doesn't mean that you don't shouldn't have thought about things of tomorrow like, okay, you know, thinking ahead a little, but, you know, you're not guaranteed today. In a millisecond, you could die. And, and uh, dear brother, that was Hebrews chapter 9, okay, Hebrews chapter 9, one verse, this one, this isn't part of the notes, but Hebrews chapter 9, the one day I was talking to a brother about this and we were totally in the wrong place. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27 and 28. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Hmm. You want to see an example, I think, a, a decent example in Scripture about taking the name of the Lord in vain? Yes! Taking the name of our Lord in vain as far as cursing and using it as a superlative or whatever. That applies, but there's a deeper thing to this. Christian, Christian, which our Lord never labeled upon us, okay? We are called to be saints. We are the church of the living God, church of God, okay? People want to argue that so that they can fit in to a mold that man has made, not God, okay? Ezekiel chapter 22. Ezekiel chapter 22. Ezekiel chapter 22, verses 23. On to the close of the chapter. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto her, Thou art the land that is not cleansed, nor rained upon in the day of indignation. See, when you boot the door out of the way, climb up some other way, being disobedient unto the truth, contentious, thinking you're a good person, you don't like the cross. Of course you don't, because it's death to you, and you're your own God. So, you're not cleansed, and rain, out of your belly shall come forth a uh, living water. Okay, you see the nourishment that our Lord gives us? That's what these people are lacking. Wow, let's continue. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof. Like a roaring lion. 
Ravening the prey, or ravening the prey. They have devoured souls. They have taken the treasure and precious things. Oh, so many times we could go here uh, with 1 Peter chapter 5. Our adversary, the devil, walketh about at, like as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Okay? Okay, I just bradized that a little bit. Big pardon. And also, they have devoured souls. They have taken the treasure and precious things, that pearl of great price, and they themselves are not entering in. Okay? Yeah, the Pharisees. Just cross land and sea to make one proselyte. And in making that proselyte, they make them twofold more, uh, twofold more the child of hell themselves. They themselves aren't entering in, and they want to make sure that everybody else that they can put their filthy little grubby hands on aren't going in either. They have made her way her many widows in the midst thereof. Mm. A widow is someone who doesn't have their covering, like in con in scripture. We've talked about this, I believe. When you look in scripture, widow is always an association unto the woman. I know men are widowers. I get that. I get that. I'm not disputing that. Scripturally, though, scripturally, this is the standard, okay? Um, widow is associated with the woman, being a widow, okay? Just, just saying, okay? So these people, these liars, number one, they're like a roaring lion, just like their father, the devil. They devour souls, and they take the treasure and precious things, and they make people, well, uh, widows. Hmm. See, this is the end result of Christianity. These people who claim to be saints, and they're not. And what is a saint? In the description box, okay? What is in the description box? Okay, I'm writing that down so I don't forget it, okay? In the description box, what is a saint, okay? See, Catholicism has told you what a saint is not, okay? But anyway, let's continue. Her priests have violated my law and have profaned mine holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. Neither have they shewed difference between the unclean and the clean and have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths and I am profaned among them. Uh, what are we reading? Where are we, uh, hold on, we're gonna. I got. I got to mention this. Yesterday, I was. I was looking at some videos, and I stumbled across this whole subgenre, if you will, of these Christians. Uh, I, I'm not going to mention names. I don't want to give them any anything. But uh, a multitude of channels. Um, and they all had this one thing in common. They were all pointing fingers at one another. They were all pointing fingers at one another. That's all they were doing. And instead of admonishing, encouraging, and edifying, along with pointing a finger. That's all they were doing. That's all they do. Now granted, I mean, there's a lot of heresy out there. But you know, we're supposed to put a difference between the unclean and the clean. And how, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? But by taking heed thereto, according to thy word, Okay, this, the authorized version, the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration, word of God. 
Okay? This is the basis of anything. That if, you're, uh, if you're online, if you're do doing anything of any kind of teaching, this ought to be the basis. Okay? But when you come across these people who they themselves don't even use or quote scripture, they have other people do it instead, and they themselves don't do it themselves, but yet all they're doing is pointing fingers. There is this whole genre, I, I don't know if I'm even using the appropriate word, of these types of Christians who swear, who smoke publicly, publicly, okay? Hey, if you if you you got that, you're a saint or whatever, whatever, you know, whatever, that, that's between you and the Lord. But, you know, you're, that's not something that you're going to boast about because God's grace covers it, okay? But these, these guys who call themselves these Christians and they're on their video smoking a cigarette. Don't judge me. Ah. And see, that's what they were doing. That's what they were doing. They were living like a devil. They were acting like devils, debating, going nowhere. How does a debate at all edify someone when you have two opposing things? You look in scripture about debate. Okay? It's a one-upmanship. It's it's a joke. It's a joke. But like I said, there is this whole... And I found this just by, uh, you know, a dear brother made a wonderful video about Psalm 37. Great video. And another brother um, sent me a couple videos <laughs> about, about someone who crazy. Who's absolutely crazy. But that led into, it's like, what's this? And, you know, and unfortunately that happened. And I'm like, I'm sitting there and I gave some of these people my, my time. And I'm like, dude, what? 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 You see them. And it's like, this is, see, and this is the problem with these live streams. This is the problem with it. Okay? Devils can come in, in their, their live chat, okay, but yet, when you get all these people together who are not who are not saints, who are not of the Church of the Living God, who are not like-minded at all, even as lost devils, it's it's painful to watch. It's painful. It's it's like, wow, wow. Verse twenty-seven. Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves ravening the prey. To the prey, to shed blood, and to destroy souls, to get dishonest gain. And her prophets have dawed them with untempered mortar, seeing vanity, and divining lies unto them, saying, Thus hath the Lord God, when the Lord hath not spoken. The people of the land have used oppression. And exercised robbery, and have vexed the poor and needy. Yea, they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. And like I said, these I, I I'm not going to mention these channels because I'm not going to give them any anything. It's just I, I I saw a whole bunch of them. There was one guy <laughs> that I don't know how this guy came up, who was a guy dressed like a woman. Claiming to be a Christian, smoking a cigarette, playing video games, and I, I, I came upon this by just whatever, because this one dude I found uh, that was in like in the one part when you're watching a video, it's like, what's that? And it's like, dude! And uh, it's like, wow, wow. You see, when you have these Christians here, who all they do is debate. All they do is debate. And all they do is point the finger at everyone else. Someone who is genuinely seeking the Lord. 
or someone like a an, uh, um, a Muslim or something like that or a Hinduist or even a Buddhist. Take a look at this nonsense. Again, a, a good example are the true Hebraic Jewish people. They look at this, what is called Christianity, man. You know what they're doing? You know what they're doing? This, this is what they're doing. And rightfully so. Rightfully so. These people, these people are succeeding in making the faith that was once delivered unto the saints look abhorrent and they are not even representative of the true faith that was once delivered unto the saints. And right here, verse 30. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. But I found none. Therefore have I poured out mine indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. The tie-in with uh, Peter there. Their own way have I recompensed with an S upon their heads, saith the Lord God. Man, flesh, doesn't want to go to the way of the way of the cross because it's contrary to the flesh. So what do they do? They boot the door out of the way and they go up some other way. And personally, and I've shared this on many occasions, I personally believe when the redemption of the purchased possession will happen, and I sought for a man among them, that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the, before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Somewhere, I truly believe, I truly believe in my heart, with the billions of persons, spirit, soul, and body that are on this planet, I truly believe that at least one soul per day, maybe getting saved. A lot of people like to argue that. That's fine. That's fine. Can I prove that? No, there are little bits and pieces that, you know, that may support that, yes, but that's just my own personal thing. I, I'm more optimistic like that. I am, because, I mean, if the Lord isn't saving anybody, anybody, then the point is what? Like we already looked at. Accountability onto these people who are digging their graves deeper with every time they open up their mouths. Giving them more rope to hang themselves. See, I understand both of those arguments. I understand that. I understand that. Okay? If the Lord isn't saving anybody at the moment, if no one like... Let's say today the Lord doesn't save a soul, okay? Then why why are we still here? Accountability. Because who knows, maybe a day or two uh, ahead? Maybe? We don't know, see? We don't know. We don't know what's going to be on tomorrow. We don't know. But see, like we started out with, what if, what if God, willing to shew his wrath, put up, with much long suffering with these wicked devils. And First John, this I, I saw I, I saw as meat. First John chapter two, very familiar. You know this verses eighteen on to verse twenty one. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that antichrist shall come, even now there are there many antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. They're just coming out of the woodworks. I mean, the things that I looked at yesterday, uh, it's like there was no end of these people. 
You know, just because you can read and sit in front of a camera doesn't mean that the Lord has called you to do such. They went out from us, but they were not of us. <laughs> For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. Spirit of truth, he will lead you, he will guide you into all truth. The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, who is the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit that dwells within the saved, born again, converted brother or sister. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. And, and Galatians chapter 6, Galatians chapter 6, not Luke, Galatians chapter 6, verses 3 on to verse 8. And, and this, this is a real big warning. See, we are told to examine ourselves. Prove ourselves, whether or not we are in the, the faith. How do we do that? Paul talks about, yea, I judge not mine own self, but he who judgeth me is the Lord. How does the Lord judge those who are without? We're going to talk more about this because we're going to hit uh, sometime this week, Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 on to verse 4. But, okay, we are to judge, beginning with ourselves, but to judge one another and to judge others. How? Do the authorized version of the scripture. Rightly divided. Rightly divided. Okay? Okay? So, those who are without God judgeth. How does God judge those who are without? By the word. Through the scriptures. Give you a, a couple of verses on that? Absolutely. Um, 1 Timothy chapter 1. <clears throat> uh, be, uh, verses 8 on to verse 11. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. And we who are saints, we're not under the law. We're under the law of Christ, which is described in Romans chapter 13, within the Pauline epistles in and of itself. Okay? Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. Those that are without, you're going to be judged by the law. And see, Christ is our, was redeemed us from the law. The law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. We've talked about that in depth. There will be links in the description box for you to consider. Okay? But, okay, God judges, judges those that are without the lost. You know, have you ever lied? Have you ever stolen? Huh? Have you ever coveted? Huh? Well, according to that, see, you can't, you can't live up to that. Okay? We who are saved, okay, we are under the law to Christ. The law today for us, found within the doctrine of the Pauline epistles, uh, especially. Okay? But let's continue. Verse 3. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. You think you're saved because you just believe. You think you're saved because you're elect. You think you're saved because you can Frame words with, spoken with your mouth. Have you died of yourself? Have you been the way of the cross? But let every man prove his own work. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. Assurance of salvation. 
For every man shall bear his own burden. Every one of us is going to give an account of himself to God. Hey, brother, you're not going to stand before the Lord because of my sins. Nor am I going to stand before the Lord because of your sins. I got my own burden. I'm going to have to stand before the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ. Thank you. Right? It's like, I got my own, dude. <laughs> you know? Okay? Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Ah, communication. The word. The word. Not baseless, circling, never-ending, debating arguments that prove nothing but yet entertain. I watched some of that last night. Shame on me. Shame on me. I, I did. And it's like, I'm sitting there with this like stunned perplex. It's like, I, I, I pity anyone who takes this seriously. But see, it's a captivating, it's a seducing thing. These debates. Why? Because there is always, there's headbutting. Okay? It's conflict. Okay? It's conflicting. One on one, one opinion. How long halt you between two opinions? If the Lord be God, serve him. Okay? Or serve the little G God of this world. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. What do you choose? <laughs> Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Do you realize people who call themselves Christians are taking the name of the Lord in vain? Because they say they're claiming to be saved saints. A majority of them are not. Hence, if you're claiming to be saved, and you're in reality a thief and a robber who booted the door and climbed up some other way because you don't want to go the way of the cross, then you're a thief and a liar and you're taking the names Lord, name of the Lord in vain, claiming that you're saved. For he, and here it is, and here is what I watched, unfortunately. I, I, think, I think I spent almost two hours. Combined, I, I watched some of uh, Brethren, and then a, a brother recommended a couple of uh, crazy. And, and hey, the, the, the brother, you asked me to watch them, I did. Uh, that, that, that guy crazy. That guy crazy, man. Love you. He, he crazy. He crazy. That guy crazy. You, you know who you are. You know what I'm talking about. That guy's, that guy's nuts. That guy's gone. That guy's gone. He's crazy. But, yeah, watching these things, these other, this whole, it's, it's this whole little thing. It's like, okay, you have the King James Bible even Christians. You have that group. Okay, then you have this other group of Christians, which are the, you know, the run-of-the-mill, lukewarm, like the Ray Comforts, the, um, the uh, uh, Paul Washers, the Calvinistic kind, like the John MacArthur's. And then you have the blah, you know, such as the non-denominational. And then there's this other subgenre, which I watched yesterday. Which bunch of whiny, bickering women, whiny, bickering, finger pointing, overt, overly aggressive women. That's what it, that's what it was. It's like it was like watching a soap opera. It's like you know, I actually turned it off and. I f Felt like taking a shower. It was like, wow. Wow. 
For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the capital S spirit shall of the capital S spirit reap life everlasting. Hmm. And see, a whole lot of Christianity is all about that. Sowing to the flesh, not to the spirit. And see, what happens? What happens with these people who are being allowed to continue because of God's long suffering? Even those who have made their choice, but see, why is God allowing them? They're digging their own grave deeper. We already addressed it. Giving them themselves more rope to hang themselves. Okay? But Malachi 3, verses 13 to close, in Malachi, Malachi 3. Your words have been stout against me, said the Lord. Yet ye say, what have, what have we spoken so much against thee? Ye have said, it is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance, and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? This, I believe, touches really good on all these easy believism devils, which a majority of those are what I watched yesterday, I think, who, you know, yeah, yeah, you should abstain from sin, but hey, we, we all sin, and hey, you, you, you're trying, you're speaking out, and you make a mistake, they're hypocrite, hypocrite, while all the while themselves, you know, while all the while themselves. More on that in another video. We're going to uh, dedicate a whole video to that alone. Okay, really hammer some of these guys. But let's continue. And now we call the proud happy. I'm saved because I just believe. I'm saved because I can frame words right to say something. I'm saved because I'm elect. We call the proud happy. Those who out there who boast of, uh, of their sin and declare their sin as Sodom. They, they declare their sin to the point where they can't even blush anymore, man. And they call the proud happy. Yea, they that work wickedness are set up. Yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. And to that, hold your place there. Let's touch again on Romans. Romans chapter 9, verse 22. What if God, willing to shew his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? And let's touch on Romans chapter 2 again. Romans chapter 2 again. Verse 5. But after thy hardness, an impenitent heart treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Hmm. Go back to Malachi. Verse 15 again. And now we call the proud happy. Yea, they that work wickedness are set up. Yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. You know, the time of Jacob's trouble, that seven-year period after we, the body of Christ, the church of the living God, get redeemed, called up, you know, caught up, excuse me, that seven years of God's wrath on earth where Satan, through that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to be running without restraint, without anything letting, Okay? He's doing that now, but see, we, the church of the living God, the saints, are letting. Okay, as long as we are here, that man of sin, the son of perdition, will not be revealed. After we're gone, guess what? Okay? Okay? But that's seven years, man. The mere shock that is going to come upon some of these people when they're left behind. Wow, man. 
wow, I can't, I, I can't even, I can't even imagine it, you know? I liken it recently with thought about it, about the Titan thing, okay? Made that one video, which will be in the description box for you to see, okay? Um, because at the time that the Lord had me to do that video, nobody knew, even though they already knew. Wow, go, I mean, go figure that one, the whole story of that nonsense, how they handled it, you know, it was just incredible, but. Those people on that Titan, they, they didn't even know it hit them. They, they didn't feel a thing. They didn't die in any pain. They had no pain. One minute they were smiling, looking at each other. The next moment, they're standing before the Lord Jesus Christ. And in that respect, when we get caught up in sun, and even as a quick of a moment, like an implosion that killed those five guys quicker than a snap of the fingers, okay? Quicker than that. V roughly, similarly, we, the church of the living God, be redeemed, caught up that quickly. Then what? Then the dispensation changes. Then you got and these guys who talk about well, uh, salvation never changes in the dispensation. And then they're you're going to be going. These Christians that get left behind, they're going to be thinking that it's grace through faith in the time of Jacob's trouble, which these people are setting these people up for. See, that great multitude that gets killed at the very beginning. Of the time of Jacob's trouble. Um, I believe it's going to encompass a lot of these Christians who realized we've messed up and realized they've been lied to and that they have booted the door out of the way all their all this time and that they've done screwed up and blew it. And those, you know, that man of sin, the son of perdition going to make quick work because the Christians, you know, the ones that are promoting all this nonsense, they're not going to be, they're not going to be nothing to the man of sin, the son of perdition. They're going to be on his side, but there are going to be some who get left behind who are going to be like, oh, wow, we were wrong. Oh, wow. Wow. Now, now, now it's by, like faith and works like it was under the law. Verse 16, Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him. For them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name, and they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts. In that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son, that serveth him. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth not. And see, in Ecclesiastes 8, in Ecclesiastes 8, 11 on to verse 13, Ecclesiastes 8, 11 on to 13, Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Well, where's your God, huh? Where's your God? Hmm? I don't see any judgment. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little of this that I know I shouldn't do. Hey, it's okay. God's grace covers it all, right? Though a sinner do evil a hundred times. And his days be prolonged. Yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God. Which fear before him. Christianity preaches to you a God 
who you're not who you're not supposed to fear. They take the things that God does for you in order to fear him, they equate that onto Satan. The um the Bread of Life podcast, the last one that was done, uh, we touched on that about, and we give example of how Christians are presenting to you a God who ought not to be feared. But everything that is negative, they want to attribute it to Satan. And see, in order to truly be saved by our Lord Jesus Christ, you have to die to yourself. That's negative. You know, I don't really like to quote Mr. Ruckman, but what he said on this was true. The power of negative thinking. Negative. Yes, I, I mean, he was right on that. He was right on that. Okay? Verse 13. But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days which are as a shadow. Why? <laughs> because he feareth not before God. There is no fear of God before their eyes. These Christians that I... I didn't interact with them at all. I just on the outside observing it's like wow no fear of God. No fear of God. None. Why? Because God loves you. Yeah. No fear of God before their eyes. Ezekiel 20. Ezekiel 20. Ezekiel 20, verses 33 on to verse 39. And see, fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And unto man he said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Okay? When the Lord saves you, he is your God. He is your Father. Okay? He has every single right to tell you what to do. Okay? And you know, the kingdom of heaven, we're going to be ruled by a king. Not a democracy. Not socialism. But by a monarchy. A monarch. You could say a dictator. They use, The word dictator is usually meant with a negative slant. But remember, the kingdom of heaven is going to be a perfect government where righteousness is there, in perfection, no corruption. Every government of man ever has been flawed. That government that will be upon his shoulders, as it talks about in Isaiah chapter 9, will be flawless, perfect. Okay? But see, here's the thing. Here's the thing. And this is what I want to really drill home to you. Sooner or later, you're going to bow for the Lord Jesus Christ. Sooner or later, you're going to bow to him. Where and when, that depends. But And see, your belief on this is irrelevant. That's what's going to happen. You, whoever you are, whoever you think you are, you are going to bow before the Lord Jesus Christ. God, amen. Right? I did mine. I began to bow to the Lord Jesus Christ in a bathroom on a cold concrete floor covered in snot, crying. April 28th, 2008. Been doing it ever since, bowing my knee to the Lord. See, in, in, pentient, in, in penitent, I can't pronounce that word. Um, impenitent means not 
bowing, not yielding, not bowing the knee, because of thy hardness and impenitent heart, not willing to bow. You put the door out of the way and climb up some other way. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out will I rule over you. Hmm. And I will bring you out from the people. And we'll get now this in context, of course, is written for the Jewish people. This is our instruction in righteousness, okay? Which we need a lot of right now. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries whither, wherein ye are scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury pulled out. And that he did, bringing the Jews back to um, Israel in 1948. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people and there will I plead with you face to face. Pleading is not, in scripture is not this, oh please, oh please, no. It's a trial lawyer. The plea is, here is your indictment. This is what you are guilty of. Here's your problem. Deal with it. That's, that's why these devils don't like Romans 1, 2, and Romans 3, and up to verse 18. Anything after verse 18, they like, and they don't even, but then there's only a certain amount in Romans 3 that they like to use skipping over all of this other stuff, okay? Yeah, yeah. The pleading is not, oh, no. The pleading is, here's my indictment against you. Here are the charges against you. Guilty, 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 guilty. That's what plead means in scripture. Plead. Okay? Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, saith the Lord God. And I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant, and I will purge out from among you the rebels. And them that trans transgress against me, I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. As for you, O house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, Go ye, serve ye every one his idols, and hereafter also, if ye will not hearken unto me, but pollute ye my holy name no more with your gifts and with your idols. And see, these Christians today are doing exactly that. They are polluting our Lord's name with their gifts and with their idols. Now context, the little statue. Overall, an idol is what? Something that takes the place of God. And nine times out of ten today, that idol, if it isn't a Christ mass tree, is the one that they look at in the mirror themselves. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. I will be like the Most High. You are taken by your own brightness and by your own beauty. Any man think himself to be something when he's nothing, he deceives himself. We already looked at it. Okay? <laughs> and, uh, you know, in Luke chapter 19, just one verse, Luke chapter 19, we, we see this of our Lord, verse 27, but those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. Sooner or later, you're going to bow. The Lord, Jesus Christ, is your God and your King. You might say, well, I never bowed my knee to Jesus Christ. And he never was, I never professed uh, loyalty to him. In the day of judgment, boy, girl, that don't matter. 
He is the one who created you. He is your judge. You are going to stand before him and give an account. Your belief on that is irrelevant. That doesn't matter. That's what's going to happen. You're going to give an account. You're going to stand before the one that you have mocked, the one that you have always claimed for 25 years, okay, that you have been serving when serving Satan in reality. You're going to stand before that very one. Your belief on that doesn't matter. Where you're going to stand before him, well, that's a different story. It's going to be at the judgment seat of Christ, being redeemed? Or are you going to take your number at the great white throne? Where's it going to be at there, pal? Where's it going to be at? Isaiah chapter 45. There was another part of this that I was going to read, but I'm not, no, no. I think you got the point. Isaiah 45. Isaiah 45, verses 20 on to verse 25. Okay? Isaiah 45, verses 20 on to verse 25. Assemble yourselves. And come, draw near together, ye that are escaped of the nations. They have no knowledge that set up wood, that set up the wood of their graven image, and pray unto a God that cannot save. Now, of course, he's talking clearly about a graven image made out of wood, but praying to a God that cannot save. Okay, instruction in righteousness here. Satan cannot save you. You cannot save yourself. The Lord is the one who does the saving. Okay? Okay? What God are you praying to? Tell ye, and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from ancient time? Who hath told it from that time? Have not I the Lord, and there is no God else beside me, a just God and a Savior? There is none beside me? Excuse me. Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is none else. I have sworn by myself, the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness, and shall not return, that unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Surely, Shall one say, In the Lord have I righteousness and strength. Even to him shall men come. And all that are incensed against him shall be ashamed. Incensed against him. You've booted the door out of the way and climbed up some other way. You would have nothing to do with this Jesus Christ of the authorized version of the scriptures who has been preached unto you. And the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be justified and shall glory. Look at verse 23. That unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. And of course you know where we go to next with that, don't you? Don't you? Don't you? Even you, you heretic, you know, facade devils No, this one. Philippians 2, verses 9 on to verse 11. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Every tongue. Every tongue. You Christ deniers, you easy believism devils, whatever, whatever flavor or blend of this satanic Christianity you are, 
And those of you who just outright reject him, doesn't matter. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It says should. Doesn't say that we will. Yeah. Yeah, see, and that's what these people do. I watched the but that's that's how they think. They nitpick these things. They're nitpicky in order to justify themselves. Their 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 best thing that they have is that they can argue. And that's all they do well. And in arguing, no truth comes out. Okay? And of course, uh, Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 4, verses 10 on and verse 12. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders which is become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3. Okay. The way of the cross is death. Okay. I, yeah, I understand why you would have repre being reprehensive about going in the way of the cross. But see, have you not had the hell scared out of you? Have you not been made, made aware of how wretched and how wicked you are? No, because Christianity gives you a God who you're not, who you're not supposed to be afraid of. It's all about the good. There's no negative. Okay? Okay? There's none in Christianity. You're rotten, no good, lousy sinner, and you're destined to go to hell unless you repent of your self-righteousness, call upon the name of the Lord after you, take responsibility for putting him on the cross, and having the hell scared out of you, you call upon his name and he save you. Okay? See, Christianity takes out the negative. Christ cannot be a glory unto you, the body of Christ, unless he has first made death unto you by going the way he has called you, the way of the cross. Okay? The Lord does this. One thing you lack. He goes after that one thing. Okay? He goes after that. He shows you. You can't keep the law. You can't do it without him. Brokenness, contrition, and fear of the Lord. And that happens when you realize, oh no, you have no hope. Excuse me. Have any of you been hopeless before? <laughs> but no, what happens? These people dig down into themselves and they bring up their own hope through fleshly means. And they boot the door out of the way. Now you got to remember, the book of Hebrews is written for the Hebrews during the time of Jacob's trouble. But, Hebrews 3, 7, under verse 15. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation, and said, They do always err in their heart. And they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart 
of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Great instruction and in righteousness there. And see, this is being spoken of in a context where during the time of Jacob's trouble, listen, people, people, okay? During the time of Jacob's trouble, the only ones who have eternal security during, look at me, the only ones that have eternal security during the time of Jacob's trouble are the 144,000 sealed Jews. Other than that, eternal security is not in the time of Jacob's trouble, except for those 144,000 Jews. People are lying to you, telling you it is always by grace through faith from beginning to end that eternal security was there from beginning to end. That's a lie. And they're telling you that specifically so when we, the body of Christ, be redeemed, that you're going to go on believing that nonsense and you're going to be damned to hell, especially when you take that mark of the beast. Be aware of this. Be aware of this. Please. Verse 14. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Oh, you mean like enduring to the end? Well, it is said, Today if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. And then also Hebrews chapter 4, verse 7. Again, he limiteth a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Hmm. See, because the Lord is going to come back at his second coming, and he is going to establish the kingdom of heaven. Okay? All right? And about that, just uh, some quick refresher verses here. Zechariah chapter 14. Zechariah chapter 14. Okay? Zechariah chapter 14. We want verses 16 on to verse 20. Yes, we've touched on these before, but... Zechariah 14, verses 16 on to verse 20. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem, this is in context to the kingdom of heaven, shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. During the kingdom of heaven, the feasts and stuff like that are going to be there to worship the Lord who's going to be sitting on the throne of Jerusalem. Okay? And it shall be that whoso will not who that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And the families of Egypt, and if, excuse me, the family of Egypt go not up, and come not, that have no rain, there shall be the plague, wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the Feast of the Tabernacles. Sooner or later, you're all going to bow. Sooner or later, you're all going to bow. During the kingdom of heaven, you don't go to worship the Lord. You're not going to get rain on your land. Farming, crops is going to be the main source of food, not stuff produced in factories like here in America. Verse 20, In that day shall there be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord, and the pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the, the altar. Verse 21, Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts, and all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and seethe therein, and in that day there shall be no more Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. Of course, Amos chapter 9, got, of course, natural, naturally, when you talk about this, Amos chapter 9, 11 on to verse 15. In that day, what day is that? Second coming. 
Will I raise up the tabernacle of David that has fallen, and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old, as when King David was on the throne, our Lord Jesus Christ will be on the throne at Jerusalem. That they may possess the remnant of Edom, and of all the heathen which are called by my name, saith the Lord that doeth this. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the treader of grapes him that soweth seed, and the mountain shall drop sweet wine, and the hills shall melt. Farming is going to be the main source of food, of agriculture or whatever. It's going to be farming during the kingdom of heaven. You're not going to be having synthetic material, not no GMO anything, okay? It's going to be farming, okay? Praise the Lord. Hey, brother, you're going to get that farm that you've always wanted. <laughs> hey, brother, during the kingdom of heaven, that shoulder of yours, that ain't going to be nothing because you're going to get, you know, you'll have your new body and whatnot. Because you come back down. We're like the angels. We come back down with him at his second coming. You're going to be a farmer, right? Go for it. Yeah. Okay. And I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel. And they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. Proving to you that during the kingdom of heaven it's farming. And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land which I have given them, saith the Lord thy God. And of course, you can read about his second coming in Revelation 19. And the final straw, the thousand year reign, which is in Revelation chapter 20. And that, you know, after a thousand years, Satan will be let loose out of his uh, uh, bottomless pit prison, going and go forth to deceive nations because sin will still be present during the time of the kingdom of heaven. But after that, the great white throne of judgment, and then Satan, sin, death, and hell will all be cast into the lake of fire to burn forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And then there will be no more sin in a new heaven and a new earth where this is going to be. Especially, you know, it's going to be farming during the time of the kingdom of heaven, but a new heaven and a new earth without any sin? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And see, when our Lord as King returns, Psalm 95. We're almost done. Psalm 95. Let's read some psalms. Psalm 95. Sooner or later, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter who you think you are. Sooner or later, you are going to bow to the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Why not today? Why not now? Why not now? I know the cross is offensive to you. It's supposed to be. That's what makes it glorious. It can't be a glory unless it's first a suffering. But see, Christianity gives you a God who has no requirements, who is not negative at all, and yes, the Lord God is good. Amen. But in order to receive his grace, his salvation, through your faith, you have to go the way he has prescribed and not boot the door out of the way. And we, we, unto our King, our Lord Jesus Christ, O oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. Amen. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. King of kings, Lord of lords, and uh, King of kings and Lord of lords. 
In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it. And his hands formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. Amen, hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. In everything, give thanks. Okay? For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture. We go in and out and find pasture, because we don't boot the door. We go through the door. Jesus Christ is the door. Okay? For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, <laughs> if ye will hear his voice, harden not your heart, as in the day of provocation, as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said it is a people that do err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. Unto whom I swear my wrath, they should that they should not enter into my rest. Psalm 96. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord. Bless his name. Shew forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen. His wonders among all the people. Uh, declare his glory among the heathen. The, declare the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The blood shed on the cross. As a living, walking example. As an ambassador for Christ. Of the church of the living God. A saint. Having the ministry of reconciliation. And the word of reconciliation. Okay? For all, for the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. That's a little G. Okay? But see, the God of Christianity, why should you fear him? The God of Christianity is not the God of the scriptures, people. For all the gods of the nations are idols. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Satan, I shall be like the Most High. And see, when that's in you, and you live by that, you are of your father the devil. And that will cause so many of you to boot the door out of the way and shout through the crack. Your heresy and your lies. Yeah. For the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord, O ye kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Sooner or later, you are all going to bow before the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you going to do it as a saint or as a sinner who's going to be cast into the lake of fire? Hmm? Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth, but not the God of Christianity. No, no, no. Anything negative, that's Satan. Say among the heathen, among the heathen, that the Lord reigneth. The world also shall be established, that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. Ah, and see right there, verse 10 there, brother, sister. See, the kingdom of heaven, that perfect government. Isaiah 9, hold your place there. Hold your place there. Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9, uh, verses 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, 
and his name shall be called capital W Wonderful, capital C Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, asked Jesus Christ, but is the Father. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Go back to Psalms. Yes, verse 10. Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth. The world also shall be established that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice before the Lord. For he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. With his truth. An authorized version of the scriptures. An authorized version of the scriptures. Every, every single government of man has failed and will fail. America, that, I don't care who you are, I don't care what your argument is, our founding fathers here in America were Freemasons. They were Freemasons. Make all your little petty arguments, well, George Washington, he wasn't a Freemason. Yes, he was. A Freemason is a whore who takes in all religions, just like that scoundrel Benjamin Franklin. Okay? That is a Masonic document. The one thing in the Federalist Papers that was warned about the backlash, the, the drawback of capitalism, we are seeing here today. And as far as communism, we've talked about that in length as well. Okay? All of man's governments have failed. Why? Why? For he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth, he shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. I for a long time used to say that America was founded on Christian principles. Well, when you look at what a Christian actually is, yeah, you're right. Yeah, but this nation was not founded upon this, the authorized version. Some of the original 13, okay, I'll give you that. Okay, okay, some of them, yes, you can make a valid argument for that. But see, that's so passe. And I'm telling you, by the time Mary's land was incorporated in the original 13, America, this this whole thing was done before it began. It was already done. Okay? Get your head out from betwixt your buttocks thinking that America is ever going to be this great godly nation because it never was. Okay? The only mercy that is being shown to this ungodly nation is because of he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way, the saints of the church of the living God. That's the only reason why mercy is being showed here. Okay? See, when the Lord comes back and establishes the kingdom of heaven for a thousand years, okay, God himself as king ruling on the throne of David. Perfect. Which no government of man no Jesuitical cunning could ever come close to. Ever. Hmm. Can you handle another psalm? How about Psalm 97? The Lord reigneth. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of isles be glad thereof. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. A fire goeth before him. And burneth up his enemies round about, uh, round about, uh, round about, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. His lightnings enlightened the world. The earth saw and trembled. 
The hills melted like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness, and all the people see his glory. At the second coming, every eye is going to see him coming. Every eye is going. All over this world, every eye is going to see the Lord coming. Okay? At his second coming. Confounded be all they that serve graven images, that boast themselves of idols. Worship him, all ye gods. Zion heard and was glad. And the daughters of Judah rejoiced because of thy judgments, O Lord. For thou, Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted above, far above all gods. Little G. Ye that love the Lord hate evil. We hate every false way. Okay? Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. Ye that love the Lord hate evil. He preserveth the souls of, of the Christians. He preserveth the souls of his saints. He delivereth them out of the hand of the wicked. Light. Now there's a capital L light, but that's the beginning of a verse. Okay? Light is sown for the righteous and gladness for the upright in heart. You could tie that in, I suppose, with 1 John, uh, 1 John, John chapter 1 with the four lights. Okay? Four capital L lights. Like I said, though, this is the beginning of the verse. Just so you know. Rejoice in the Lord, ye righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Shh, shh. Shh, shh, shh. I know what you're thinking. Just leave that one alone, okay? <laughs> Can you handle one more? Can you handle one more? See, these guys I watched yesterday, they'll spend six hours yelling, uh, uh, stepping on each other's toes, having no decorum, arguing, insulting one another, but barely a verse of scripture be brought up. Barely did anyone read from the scriptures. Give me a break. Give me a break. Okay? That's entertainment. Oh, one more. Can you handle one more? Is this too much scripture for you? <laughs> hey, you, I challenge you, make one video, pick one chapter of the scriptures, go ahead, and just read one chapter of the scriptures, go ahead, just do that, let's see, at least, at least, hey, look at it this way. At least the plausibility, the suspension of disbelief might be added onto your side a little bit. But these people. Mm. One more and then we'll be done. <laughs> oh, I mean, and we, could, we could continue all the way on to Psalm 100. We can. But we won't. You on your own time got to do a little of this yourself, okay? Psalm 98. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm hath gotten him the victory. The Lord hath made known his salvation. His righteousness hath he openly shewed in the sight of the heathen. He hath remembered his mercy and his truth toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord all the earth. Make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praise. Sing unto the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of a psalm, with trumpets and sound of cornet. Make a joyful noise before the Lord the King. Let the sea roar in the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. 
Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills be joyful together before the Lord. For he cometh to judge the earth. With righteousness shall he judge the world and the people with equity. You know, sooner or later, if you are actually, you know, if you're seeking the Lord, sooner or later, you, you're going to have to stop messing around and take the Lord seriously. Every, every day, every day, we bow our knees unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? He is our God. He is our Father. He is our King. Okay? He has the right to tell you what to do. People will say, well, that's Lordship salvation. Um, <laughs> if you're saved he is your Lord <laughs> I understand what people say when they say Lordship salvation you know they mean that you clean up your life first and then you know that kind of thing that kind of nonsense like, like easy believism like uh, hyper dispensationalism there are many flavors to it. There are many flavors. Their ways are movable that thou canst not know them. Sooner or later, you are going to bend your knee to the Lord. I do. We do. The saints do. Because he has saved us by his grace through faith. And he is worthy to be praised. And we implore him for his mercy. You guys who are going to do it, you're going to do it because hmm, you're going to be asking him for mercy. And a majority of you are not going to get it at the great white throne. Now's the time. Because those of you who are all about pointing the finger at other people and no self-examination, hmm, you're going to get your chance to see how you live it. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. What about you? Thank you for watching this. If you do, we'll see you in the next video. Bye.